hello guys welcome to modern web in today's video we will talk about css flexbox if you don't know who i am well modern web makes tutorial on web development to master your web dev skills if that excites you make sure to subscribe the channel and don't forget to like this video well basically i decided to make a css series in which we will talk about some advanced css concepts i'm not gonna talk about css basics like background color or margin versus padding of course you know about those things we will talk about flexbox css transform pseudo class css grid css position css font after all of this we will see media query css animation and the last we will see how to code this will be the best video in my opinion because in this video we will talk about how we can break down any complex design into simple one so if you are interested make sure to subscribe the channel so without wasting more time let's start today's video so what is flexbox why we need it let's see so basically in html we consider everything as a block you can see this illustration even though my h1 element is too short it's just a covering blue part but it has a full width you can see the right part it's considered as a block the same as our p element is also considered as a block so the problem is we can't have our blocks side by side but what if we want them to side by side if we want h1 and p element side by side what should we do for exactly this purpose we have css flexbox by using css flexbox we can make elements or html block side by side you can see the illustration so let's see how we can use this flexbox in real life so for this example i have a, an h index.html page and i style.css file so quickly make a home page give it a title flexbox and link the style.css file inside body tag make an h1 element for our heading and give it a class heading let's say type this is a simple heading and after h1 element make p element and give it a class para so we are creating the same element as we illustrated in the ppt so yes now if we see the output you can see my para element is coming below the heading element even though my heading element is not covering the full width actually it is covering the full width because it is considering as a html block so let's use display flex here so now let's see how can we use this flexbox so to use flexbox we use display property and the flex is a value of it so if you ever use display property in the css you know we give this to the element itself like if you want to hide the element you give display none to the element itself let's for example let's hide the heading element so select the heading element and give display none so you can see our heading element is hidden yeah so why is it hidden because we used display none. so we use display flex by using display property so obviously we will give display flex to the heading element itself let's see what happen if we give it to you can see our heading element and para element are not coming side by side why is that because in CSS, we don't give display flex to the element itself. But instead, we give display flex to the nearest parent element. You can see the illustration below. You can see the heading element and para element have a common parent, which is body. The body is the nearest parent of H1 and P element in this illustration. As the same we have the code in which we have h1 and p element and the nearest parent is body so if we give display flex to body we should see the elements side by side and you can see the h1 and p elements are side by side now so this is how we use flexbox we give flexbox to the nearest parent element i want to take one more example here so let's make a dev here and let's say give it a class of container and cut this h1 and p element and paste it inside this container div 
Now what do you think what should be the output now because we have display flex in our body and technically h1 and p elements are the children of body element. So if we refresh the page you can see our para element is coming again below the h1 element. Why is that because I said you should give display flex to the nearest parent element and in this example we have nearest parent element is current container we are nearest parent element is container so if we give display flex to the container element it will make the h1 and p element side by side and if we refresh the page you can see both of them are now side by side so i just want to clear this thing you should always give display flex to the nearest parent element now let's see some flexbox properties so let's see the first property we have is justify content well justify content used to place children or the elements in x-axis or left to right axis or horizontal axis you can see the green line in the illustration so let's take the example here for this example i'm going to create three devs and let's style these devs so remove this container block and style the body element give uh, set its margin 0 and padding 0 because we really don't need any margin and padding add display flex of course we are working with flexbox and style the dev give it a width 200 pixels and set its height to 200 pixels of course and obviously give it a background color of red or whatever you like and if we refresh the page, you can see the devs, but they don't have some spacing. So let's add some margin to it. Add some margin. In this case, I am adding 20 pixels. Okay, so our devs are great now. So now let's see some justify content examples. we give justify content property to the parent in this case we will give it to the body exactly so let's see some of its value the first value we will see is flex start flex start means basically place the elements in the start which is the default value of course and the another value is flex end which will place the elements in the end you can see the elements are in the end and the third and the obvious value is center and you can guess what it will do yeah obviously it will place the elements in the center the third fourth property is space around space around will create space among all devs but will create the more space will create more space between the inner devs as compared to outer devs you can see the illustration or visualization and the other property is space between which will only give space between divs but remove the space from outer divs and the last value is flex evenly which will distribute the space among all divs evenly so this was about justify content well we use this to place our elements Another flex property we have is align item. Align item used to place children in y axis or vertical axis on the screen. You can see the green line the illustration below. We also give align item property to the body or the parent element itself. The first value is of course flex start which basically place the element on the top on the start. And the other value yeah you guessed right flex end which will place the items at the bottom or at the end so why it didn't work because we haven't given a fixed height to our parent or body element so if we give a fixed height to it it will place the elements at the bottom you can see it's working now and the other obvious value of align item is center which obviously place the elements in the center and the fourth value is stretch and this value will stretch the elements but you can see nothing happened our devs are not stretched why because we have a 
fixed height if we remove it our div will stretch you can see it's stretched now so this was about align items now the main purpose of using flexbox is responsiveness but if you can see you can see the uh, width of devs are being squeezed while going to smaller devices or smaller screens so how we can fix this is there any solution of it yes we have a solution we have flex wrap property flex wrap property it will wrap the children or element to make the website responsive for this example let's increase the number of divs let's make it six instead of three and let's set the align item to center for now because it's not looking too good so we have to give a fixed height of course so set its height back to 200 pixel great now let's see how we can use flex wrap so add a property of course this will we also add this to body element add flex wrap and this has three values no wrap wrap and wrap reverse no wrap basically means no need to wrap which is the default value and if we want to wrap we will give wrap so this will wrap the container so you can see now our devs are getting wrapped and maintaining its width and height so this is making our website responsive to all screens this is the main purpose and main reason why we use flexbox The other value of flex wrap is wrap reverse and this will reverse the wrap direction. So for this example, let's uh, set the first div color to green. So select div and use pseudo class first child. If you don't know about it, don't worry. We will talk about this in later videos. But for now, you can just write it. Okay, so nothing happened. Why? Because this should be first child, not first. We will talk about it in, in upcoming videos, so no worry about it. Now you can see my first div is green in color. Okay, so what does flex wrap reverse mean? So wrap reverse is just reversing the direction of wrap. So you can see now my divs are getting above the green box. But if I... I set it back to reverse it will go below the green box so it's just changing the direction of wrapping after flex wrap we have one more property which called flex direction this sets the direction of flex in which direction and which flow we want our elements to go in of course this will also be in the parent element add flex direction and this generally has four values row reverse row column and column reverse and the default value is row of course and if i give row reverse you can see my green div is at the last now because it reversed the row and the third value is column you can see i got three columns and the fourth and obvious one is column reverse this will reverse the column of course and you can see my green box is now at the bottom so this was about flex direction and display flex we have some other properties like flex scroll flex basis flex shrink align self but according to me you don't really need them in general most of the cases so i'm not going to tell you about it but you can uh, uh, google it about it or you can just ask me in the comments i'll be glad to tell you about them no worry so now let's wrap up this video here before ending this video i should i would like to give you some designs to for practice you can find three designs in the description which of course i designed and you can find some instructions over the design which you can follow to code for the practice if you stuck anywhere feel free to ask me via my mail my instagram or you can directly comment me down the video i'll be glad to help you make sure you make those designs and submit it on my instagram modern web channel because 
so that i'll know that you are liking this video and you are following this video so with that said thanks for watching make sure to subscribe the channel and like this video we will talk about css transform in the next video